Clerks will call the roll. Glenn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy C. Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Marty Van Ravensway, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our uh, invocation this morning will be delivered by Reverend Ben Disney uh, from the Arbor Line United Methodist Church. Uh, ben, it's good to see you again. Everyone will please uh, rise, and then after the invocation, remain standing for the pledges. Gracious God, remind us to whom much has been given, much will be required in our decisions, both big and small. May we honor you. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much. Got to kind of get back in the swing of things here as we've uh, been gone now for uh, what seems like a long time. Long time. Two weeks. Is that all? Wow. I'd argue with him, but. No, we won't. But he's right, we'll so you don't. Think. Well, we just had a very condensed short meeting on <coughs> one of that. So. True. Go right ahead, Mr. Manius. Your Honor, members of the court, we have two agenda announcements this morning. They're both under the administrator section. Um, item 8A6, this concerns indemnification issue relating to the S Company loss. Uh, we're going to handle that after closed session today. Also, item 8A12. Uh, we're going to ask that that particular item be held for one week. Also, under the district attorney's office, uh, we won't consider it a consent item because it was not on the agenda as a consent item. But uh, under D1, your court communication shows that it is a consent item, but, Your Honor, on the agenda, it's, uh, it's a non-consent. So we'll need to take that up whenever we get to it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of December the 30th. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. The motion's about to pass unanimously. Uh, again, this is the uh, first meeting of the new year, and therefore it is the meeting where we uh, Recognize those employees who are celebrating their anniversaries. They're uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and we have two 30-year employees uh, this particular month. And so uh, as I call your name, please stand and remain standing until that particular group is through, and then we'll have an opportunity to recognize and to, again, show our appreciation um, for all that, that you've met and for all that you do for the county. Uh, our first five-year employee is Joe. Boy, we're starting a new year off right. Uh, is it Agamang? Agamang. Sheriff's Department, confinement. Uh, Frank Canaliosi, information technology. I'm just getting, I mean, we just, we've got those two out of the way. I think I'm going to make this next one. Lee Clark, <laughs> criminal court support, and he's not here. <laughs> He can't recognize what you said. Linda Dooling, Sheriff Confinement. Kathleen Gowton, District Attorney. Susan Howe, Medical Examiner. Wesley Loudon, Sheriff Confinement. Welcome, sir. Uh, Marisol Martinez, Juvenile Services. Janelle Mobley, Domestic Relations, close. Uh, Cheryl Newkirk, Domestic Relations. Eric Nichols, District Attorney's Office. Amanda Preston, CSCD. Amabilia. I can't be right. Rains. Was it close? All right. 
District Attorney's Office. Here, I think I can get this one. Steve Smith. <laughs> Information Technology. Randy Turner. Juvenile Services. Naquita White. Public Health. These are our five-year employees. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you all. Uh, our 10-year employees, <coughs> Keith Barrett, Sheriff Courts, <coughs> Brian Barron, Public Health, Rashida Brockman, County Clerk, Aracelia, Castaneda, Castaneda, <laughs> They gave me the pronunciation on the first name, and then I get to the second one, and it, <laughs> nobody gave me any help on that one. You get this one. Carl Cole, <laughs> county clerk. Florence Cornelius, district clerk. Kimberly Dietrich, public health. Vincent Dotson, juvenile services. Michael Ford, sheriff warrants. Bruce Fife, District Attorney. Linda Gilliam, County Clerk. Judge Haddock, welcome. 233rd District Court. <clears throat> Adam Hill, Juvenile Services. Yvette Jones, Public Health. Eric Martinez, Sheriff Warrants. El Morisi, May, Information Technology. Did I get close? Oh, Tracy Mor Moreno. <laughs> Moreno. These people, JD, you just really get. I know you. One of these days. <laughs> one of these days. We'll just cancel the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff Booking. Cynthia Morris, Sheriff Public Ser uh, Public Service. Jason Pricer. Tax Assessor Collector. Michelle Sanders, District Attorney's Office. Chad Seals, Sheriff Booking. Kenneth Sharp, Sheriff Booking. Danita Smith, Public Health. Susan Strange, Facilities Graphics. April Westbrook, CSCD. We had a great many of the tenure. I, I really uh, appreciate it. I want to tell you all how much we appreciate you all being here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Our 15-year employees, Robert Cox, CSCD. Mark Dabol, Constable Precinct 6. Helena Faulkner, District Attorney's Office. Ann Harrelson, Facilities Management. Welcome. Bobby Harden, Sheriff Courts. Oh, Bobby. Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Brenda Hine, 371st District Court. Angela Jones, CSCD number three. Ernestine Lopez Bottle, Bindle. Bindle, Community Development. And Helen Walker, Public Health. Okay, let's give these folks a hand. Now, as most of you, I'm sure, know by now, for the 20-year-plus employees, we, uh, uh, I give a call to them, and we talk about things, and then I uh, try to convince them to tell me stuff, and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But uh, we're going to start off with our 20-year employees, and our first one is uh, Justice Dofino from the Second Court of Appeals, and she was not able to make it this morning. Uh, our next 
uh, honoree is uh, Judge Fred Davis. Judge? No, no, no. Keep standing. Keep. This is one of the few. Oper- this is one of the few times that I can tell a judge what to do, what to do and not get thrown in jail. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, judge Davis has been again with Tarrant County for uh, 20 years. Actually, he had served uh, 26 years in Arlington. Uh, you know, had practiced law in 26 years in Arlington before he uh, was elected. Uh, when I asked him of his more memorable moments. Uh, there, were a, there was a time when there was a lot of pharmaceutical cases uh, before those courts and were going through those courts. And he said, you know, one of the things that's gratifying is that they were able to go through all of those cases, uh, get the folks together, to get them to agree and to settle and to go without having to actually go to trial. And that, uh, again, it was one of those things where truly being able to get folks to, uh, to come to consensus uh, was, was really great. He said what he liked most was that he was very proud uh, to have had a chance to serve for Tarrant County. It felt like everything was very friendly here, that the whole atmosphere uh, that was exhibited, and a lot of times I think it's due to the employees that we have, uh, is the way they treat folks, and that it was always a very friendly atmosphere. People get along, um, and that the courts, personnel, the judges, and I think the judges really set the tone and set the mood for their courts, <coughs> but really try to uh, not just be there to, to run cases through their courts, but try to reach out and help folks. And, again, I think that is uh, a reason why folks uh, enjoy the having the opportunity to come here and sometimes go through that legal system as opposed to other places. Uh, when I asked him if there was anything else uh, that he wanted to do, he said, you know, I just have to, Mention how lucky I am, uh, what a beautiful wife I have, and the fact that she also, as we all know, serves has served Tarrant County for many years, uh, first in our jury services area and now is the Justice of the Peace. And, you know, what we really see, I think, both in Judge Davis and, and in his wife is, a, is a, a couple committed to public service. And, Judge Davis, we very, very much appreciate. Was there something that you'd like to? <laughs> stand up. Thank you. Y'all stand up. Judge Davis, we uh, we really do appreciate the years of service. Uh, as y'all know, uh, Judge Davis also he retired as of uh, December 31st, and I see Melanie there, our new uh, judge. Uh, stand up just a second, and we'll hopefully in 20 years we'll be recognizing you up here. <laughs> And I hope I'm up here reading it at that point in time. He's still labeled. Um, I'm sure there was a little snide comment made over here. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of ignore that at this point in time. Uh, next is uh, Marshall Morgan from the facilities. There's Marshall. Uh, started out in the election area as part-time um, and then went to personnel and then worked in the sheriff's department, and now is back in the, uh, uh, in the mail room. When I asked him about the more memorable moments, he said, you know, I started out working for the county part-time. And he said, I'll never forget, uh, and it, again, it was in the elections area, and he said, working part-time the first week, I put in 104 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, when I asked him uh, what he liked most, he said it was the variety of being able to get out, get around to the to the different buildings, the people that he had a chance to meet, and uh, the friends that he had made as, uh, you know, in the 20 years that he had been with us. Um, again, I, you know, I kind of asked him if there was anything else. He said, you know, I'm really, I try to keep a very low profile. Uh, I really enjoy what I'm doing, and I think that's, again, been very evident in the, uh, in the 20 years that you've given with us. Marshall, we appreciate that 20 years, and we hope you'll spend many more years with us. Thank you. Next is uh, Rosalind Wiley, Pretrial Services. There she is. Uh, started out in the Sheriff's Department in the booking area and then a jailer. And uh, then once she got her peace officer's 
license. Uh, she she got that and then spent nine and a half years, I guess, and went to pretrial. After nine and a half years, went to pretrial, and is now a case officer and release officer there in the pretrial uh, area. Um, when I asked her about her more memorable moments, she said again, it, if she thought back over the 20 years she spent, she said it's all a lot of the different programs that we do, not only inside of the county, but also the things that so many of y'all get involved in, the pen pal processes, the, uh, uh, you know, the commitments to, to other things outside of the county, and then some of the programs we offer the opportunity to, I think she mentioned to work in some of the fitness programs, and so again, it's something that the county offers that employees take advantage of and our ability to, to be able to work through and meet new people from other areas of the county. Uh, she liked the stability of the county, and she says, you know, uh, through the, the time that she spent, she has made a lot of lifelong relationships that have really meant an awful lot to her. And she hopes to be here a lot longer. And I tell you what, Rosalind, we really hope you are here with us a lot longer. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next is uh, Rhonda Bannister, Constable Precinct 3. 25 years. 25 years, that's correct. Uh, started out in the DA's area and spent about nine years, nine and a half years there, and then went to, uh, I believe, Precinct 7 um, for a little bit, and then back to the Sheriff's Office, and for eight years has been out there with Zane and has had to kind of keep him, I don't know, prop him up and keep him going. Uh, when I asked her about her more memorable moments, uh, she said that when she was with the Sheriff's Department, uh, she became a uh, hostage crisis negotiator, and then also uh, had an opportunity to become a family assistance officer with the chaplain's office. And that during the time that she was doing that was when we had the, uh, the helicopter crash, and that she worked with uh, Officer Hendricks' family for, uh, I guess, almost straight for about six months, but that it was a relationship and a friendship that she has maintained over the years, and, and they still communicate on a fairly regular basis. Uh, also, just again, as a, as a part of that, um, of that passion, as a part of that assistance, she went on loan to Grapevine when one of Grapevine's officers uh, went down, and, and she had an opportunity to again um, be a part of that process. And, and I know that's got to be a sad process, uh, but at the same time, it, you know, it, it gives you an opportunity to, to hopefully make a little bit of a difference and to, uh, to help a, what is already a very bad situation, maybe make it a little bit better. Uh, when I asked her what she liked most, it was the people that she'd met. It was some of the friendships that she'd made. Uh, and again, being very involved in the Special Olympics area. I think I could tell when she started talking about that the smile. I, I, I could just see it, the enthusiasm and the passion that she has for that. Uh, really in all facets, uh, raising money, um, you know, coaching, helping in, in recruiting folks, making that part of it. Certainly her, uh, uh, you know, her son has been a lot uh, of that and has, has helped with that, with that part of it. Her husband also works for the county. He's a bailiff in uh, Judge Westfall's court, and uh, he's also been with the county, I guess, for 25 years next year. It's 24 years will be 25 years next year. So, Rhonda, we appreciate very much all that you've done for Tarrant County. <clears throat> this next person, some of us will know, Ann Diamond, 25 years with the DA's office. She's the one that uh, takes care of our bonds and tries to keep us out of trouble, and sometimes it's successful and sometimes it's not. Uh, started off, um, been in the DA's office, started working in the civil area when, uh, with Marvin as the chief, uh, is now the deputy chief to Marvin in the, in the civil area. Um, when I asked her about her more memorable moments, she said that some of the, uh, that a lot of what were her more memorable moments, because she does work with a lot of elected officials, and she serves as their attorney in some interesting times, she said, they're confidential, so I can't tell you. Uh, some of those I know about, unfortunately, anyway, but uh, others I'm glad that I probably don't know about them. 
When I asked her what she liked most, again, it was the great people both within the department that she worked, but again, it was the opportunity to, to work with folks in the county, uh, to work with other elected officials, and that she really enjoyed that. She said she really loves her work. Uh, she feels like she's making a difference and really helping people. Um, when I asked her about anything, she said, you know, um, Tim and Marvin and the whole office are simply great to work for, and it, it, you know, she couldn't have asked for a better environment. She really enjoys working for, she, she even said she enjoyed really working for us. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, Ann, we appreciate all the work and all the dedication that you've given to Tarrant County over these 25 years. Thank you. Next is uh, Don Harris uh, with the Sheriff's Department, 25 years. Uh, started out, Don started out in the patrol and then uh, went into the uh, narcotics area uh, and started out there with, I guess, Sheriff Carpenter, and there were really only 200 people, well, there was only two people. And he, they kind of started out there, and what Carpenter basically said was, here's $200, the two of you get out there and get after it. And, and so that was the beginning of our narcotics uh, area. Uh, he then went back into the patrol area and then became uh, an investigator with CID and was actually the youngest one, I guess, in that department. And he said that, and then what he said was, is be, you know, the average age, I think, was well up there. And he said because he was so young, he got all of the fun jobs uh, as he was going through that process. Uh, he was promoted... Um, he was actually the first, I guess, paid, promoted sergeant for the, again, for the narcotics area, and um, then ended up as a supervisor in the Haida area and the watch center commander, as watch center commander. Uh, when I asked him what he liked most, it was, again, the camaraderie, the people that he had a chance to, uh, uh, to work with, the people who had, you know, stayed in, in the department. Uh, again, being a part of that first narcotics unit, the... Uh, the supervisors that he'd had a chance to work with, and then as so many folks, um, you know, if, if in the judiciary, a lot of the folks remember the shooting in the sheriff's department, a lot of folks, and, you know, we all recall the helicopter crash and the loss of lives in that particular one. Um, when I asked him what else, if there was anything else, I guess you were a drill instructor in the Marine Corps, and that, that you felt like that it was a you know, that you'd had an opportunity to be here. I don't think you really expected to be here uh, that long a period of time, but really felt like it was a blessed opportunity to stay here and to, to be able to advance. And, and, Don, we really appreciate the 25 years you've given to Tarrant County. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next is uh, Judy Lusk, 25 years from the facility area. She's in the graphics area. Um, she has been in that area, I guess, from the very beginning. Uh, she basically helps in all of the printing and the binding. She's the supervisor in that particular area. Uh, more memorable moments, she said, is every four years when the elections come around uh, because that really takes a toll on, on everyone. Uh, she said that this last one uh, was really the, one of the most difficult she thinks that she's been through and that they worked uh, a tremendous amount of time again to ensure that we had a smooth election process and uh, so many of our employees give so much of their time again to make sure that the process goes smoothly and that we don't have uh, some of the problems that we read about or hear about in, uh, in other areas. When I ask her, um, again another one of the memorable moments when they moved, they used to have this little bitty space in the garage, and they've now moved in the new space. And she said, "You know, that's something that uh, I just—I'll never forget moving from such a small space into what I thought was going to be more space than would ever be needed." And as I understand, you've already filled that up. So we all have a tendency to expand to whatever our uh, limits are. I know my desk looks like that most of the time. Um, when I asked her what she liked most, certainly security. She said, "I enjoy um, the job." and that really the printing uh, was something that she had grown up around. I think your, your mom had worked for a printing business. It was just something that, 
that you always felt comfortable with and that really enjoyed doing. And so, Judy, we appreciate very much the 25 years you've given to Tarrant County. <laughs> Next is uh, James Misselick, Sheriff Courts, 25 years. Uh, started out in the patrol division and then uh, went to the release desk, uh, moved into the uh, classifications area, um, spent a little time, I guess, in the grievance and the disciplinary area, and is now in judicial services. Um, he said he, what he really liked about the county is, is that, again, it was the benefits and the the long and you know and just the steady work that he had is uh, had, had an opportunity to uh, to do when uh, with Tarrant County. Uh, he never thought he'd really be here that long, um, but he's he's really enjoyed his time here. When I ask him about anything else, uh, as proud parents, I think we all uh, are proud of our children. He has a daughter, and his daughter is a helicopter pilot mm -hmm. and flies the Blackhawk. Mm -hmm. uh, just has just gotten promoted to major and uh, has just gotten back from Iraq and where she received the Bronze Star. And so uh, in, in my conversations with Jim, I could really uh, hear him swell up as he, as he had an opportunity to talk about his, his daughter and, and what she had done. And, uh, Jim, we appreciate very much the 25 years you've given to, uh, to Tarrant County. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next is uh, Judge Furchell, probate court number two, 30 years with the county. Uh, he had a long history. Um, with the, uh, I guess, in the court area before he came to Tarrant County. He started out as a municipal court prosecutor uh, with the city of Fort Worth, then the assistant city attorney for the civil division, uh, tax attorney for Fort Worth, uh, had moved into one of the municipal courts, was the chief judge of the municipal I mean, We haven't even got to the county service yet, folks. Uh, and then got a phone call from one of the city council folks encouraging him uh, to consider running for the uh, county court at law number one. And so he ran for county court number uh, one in 78, got into a runoff, and then actually took office in 79. And then when uh, the commissioner's court went down and got a second probate court, uh, he was appointed to the by the commissioner's court to that probate court in September of uh, 1981. When I asked him about his more memorable moments, he said he remembered his first jury trial that he had was really not in a courtroom, but it was actually held at the convention center. Because uh, the courthouse at that point in time was being renovated uh, for him to, to be in this, uh, to be there. Um, he also remembered the times that he would go out to JPS for his civil commitments, uh, and that that would had some interesting stories to tell. And then um, one of the other things that he has done is he's gone outside of the downtown area. He goes out to our uh, the northeast sub-courthouse and out in the Arlington area mm -hmm. and actually hears cases there, which makes it much more convenient in many instances for those folks who, are, um, who may not be able to move around as much, and so the parking is a whole lot more uh, accessible in those particular areas. He really uh, loves the staff and, and the job that he has a chance to do, the attorneys that he has a chance to work with, and really um, loves helping people. And, you know, he knew he did that, but he was recently, I guess, going through a box from high school and found a, basically a little letter where they had all kind of indicated what they wanted to do when they grew up. And his, in his letter, it actually said he really hoped that one day he would be in a position to be able to help people. And he said he never remembered writing it, uh, but that it was something that, that always kind of struck him and uh, that, you know, he really has been doing his, his lifelong passion. He never dreamed he'd be here this long. I think he planned on staying for a couple of years, 
Uh, but the job, as we all know, as we get a little bit older, has a tendency to fly by and the time flies by. And uh, uh, he said he always just looks at himself as a frustrated social worker. Uh, <laughs> He did say he was looking forward. He said, I love it so much, I'm really looking forward to coming back uh, for a celebration of his 35 years with, uh, with Tarrant County. And we hope you do, and, uh, and I'll be glad to be up here again and uh, uh, hopefully be up here again uh, reading, reading this information. And we want to thank you very, very much for the service you've given to the residents of Tarrant County. Just when you think you know what they're going to do. They, uh, our, uh, our next, now we had a, we had a 20, another 25-year employee who was not able to make it today, Valerie Young, who was with CSCD, uh, and she wasn't able to make it. Uh, so as you see her, if you see her have it through the day, be sure and, and uh, wish her a uh, happy 25th anniversary with the county. Our uh, last employee today is uh, Clifford King with CSCD. He spent 30 years uh, in CSCD. He uh, actually started out uh, in the pre-sentence investigation area, and he's now uh, the supervisor uh, in that particular area. Uh, when I asked him about the more memorable moments, he said, you know, they're all good. He said, I, I have really enjoyed the time that I've had a chance to spend uh, and the job and the, and the folks I deal with. And, you know, and again, it's how do you approach your outlook on what you're doing. Certainly within that department, you could have an opportunity to be looking at the glasses half empty most of the time. But you could just tell from the conversation with Cliff that he's one of these folks that looks at it as half full. And uh, I think, again, that's what makes Tarrant County such a great place to, to be in, to be a part of. When I asked him what he liked most, he said, I, I really enjoy the people. Um, and he said that he has watched, you know, and, and, and being in that department, he said he's had an opportunity to see a lot of folks, a lot of attorneys go from being attorneys to being judges. And he said it's been a, it's been a neat transition to watch those folks and to, and to see uh, them make that, that transition and that change. Um, another thing that he really likes is the variety of the people that he has an opportunity to deal with. Um, you know, he, he said his goal has been to do this, uh, has, and this is something that he's always enjoyed doing, and when he looks back that he is really uh, proud of the fact that he's been able to do it for 30 years. And Cliff, we appreciate, again, your dedication, your service to the folks in Tarrant County. Thank you very much. Folks, that's 755 years of service that you see in the room today. And again, I think it speaks to this, these numbers just keep growing, and it speaks to the fact that we make it fun. Uh, we, it is a job, but everybody recognizes the job that they have to do. But at the same time, they try to enjoy it and they try to have fun doing it. And that really goes out to the folks that you serve, and we appreciate you all so, so very much. Let's give them one more hand. And then... Refreshments, 504C. Back over yonder. We'll, we'll kind of pause a moment while y'all are heading out that direction.
Court members, you have before you the consent agenda, and I think we're going to look at pulling for number 23 in the purchasing area. We need to pull off of consent. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item 23 under the purchasing area. So move. Uh, any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, we have several items yet this morning. The first one, under the administrator section, we're requesting that the commissioner's court approve a non-exclusive distribution agreement between Tarrant County and NTTA as relates to the issuance of toll tax. Next. Approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? When do we get it? Uh, we're going to be working with uh, with the tax office to uh, to set that process up. So will will they'll be available through the tax assessment? Yes. Yes. Vote. Any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of the court, if we can go to item number two, we're requesting that the court approve a letter of engagement between Tarrant County and Weaver and Tidwell as it relates to the services for outside auditing for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2008. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of court, on item number three, we're requesting that the court approve a lease agreement renewal between Tarrant County through the resource connection to Congressman Michael Burgess. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of court, on item number four, we're requesting that the court approve the electronic submission of a grant application in the amount of $10,000 to the Corporations for Supportive Housing as it relates to the reentry initiatives in Texas cities. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. This is a planning grant. Yes, sir, it is. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of court, if we could go to item number five, we're requesting that the court ratify uh, three victim assistant grant applications and approve the supportive resolutions which were submitted to the Governor's Criminal Justice Division for the continuation of the Sheriff's Victims Assistance Program, the District Attorney's Protective Order Unit, and the Domestic Violence Diversion Program, which is operated by County Criminal Court number five. Move approval. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of court, if we could go to item number seven. As as we all know, there is there's great discussion in Washington, D.C. as it relates to a national stimulus package. And the information that we're receiving is that it's going to cover a multitude of areas, including transportation, uh, public buildings, a lot of public works. And uh, in, in order for us to submit some projects as it relates to or for consideration in, in this stimulus package, we have included a listing as an attachment to item number seven. And we know that, uh, that there will probably be additional projects that, that also come up uh, uh, as we move through this process. Um, there's not a clearly defined process that has already been established, but we've been working with cities and chambers of commerce in Tarrant County to have our package included with their packages as they submit those those requests uh, up the line. And what we're asking for today is that the court approve uh, uh, the attached list, which consists of both transportation and public works projects. Uh, and these will be in included uh, in the, as our submission to the national stimulus package. Then also to authorize the county administrator to add additional future projects as they are identified. Will they be coming back through court, though, as you? Yes. <clears throat> the, one thing that we're, the one thing we're trying to do, though, if, if we're on a timeline to give us the authorization to submit it, but we'll bring those back. To well, I respect the timeline, but I don't want to see something embarrassing put out uh, like I've seen from some other areas. From this, some uh, cities have not been <coughs> it's just in their choice. I've been reading in the paper. I'm assuming you've seen those. Yes, sir. I move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Yeah. 
I don't see anything on this list. That no, this this no, is this a good, is a good list. list here. Counts out as being inappropriate. Would you, would but he was talking about bringing uh, that there may be others uh, coming up that the administrator would uh, would forward. I wanted to make sure that we saw them before they. Do you have a list of the, the road project. Um, I do have a list. I, I don't have it available right now. What those projects are, they're part of the projects that were in the that were in our 2006 transportation. Uh, program that have not we have not sold debt for to finance. This doesn't go beyond the 55, 56 projects that were, or whatever the number was. Not at this time. No, it was part of that original group, but yes, the ones sir. that we haven't sold debt. Yes, for. and and the reason that we did that was because uh, we've been hearing that they're looking for projects that will start within a year to, to 18 months. We try to fit these things into that time, time frame. However, if some of these projects are funded through the stimulus package, it may allow us to stretch our dollars and move further down the list. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is to fund our portion That's of correct. those projects, right. not the municipality's portion. That's correct. Some of the municipalities also submitted their portion. Right. In, in listening and talking with a few folks last week regarding what they were saying, one of the things that to some extent was encouraging is the indication was is that there was going to be no earmarks. Congress was not going to earmark this money. It was going to come um, a portion of it to local, straight to the local areas, a portion of it straight to the state, which would then funnel it through some of the MPOs for the you know some of the larger type projects. But there was a pretty strong, adamant statement that uh, that it was not going to be congressional earmarks that were going to dictate where the money ended up going from that standpoint. Good. Any other discussion or comments? Please vote. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I noticed as I looked around, I, I commented and recognized uh, Melody Wilkerson a little bit earlier. Uh, I see we have our new constable, one of our new constables here, Robert McKinney. Uh, please stand and precinct two. Welcome aboard, sir. <laughs> now, officially, also, we have our new domestic relations officer, office director, Christy Glenn. Welcome. Norris, uh, Norris finally retired, and they pushed him out the door uh, last week. And, after going to the uh, kind of the retirement ceremony, I'm kind of looking for the auditor. I think we may still be trying to audit his expense report uh, from from just the sounds of all the fun that everybody seemed to have with Norris's over the years. Uh, uh, it was a, it was a great opportunity if you didn't have a chance to to come and be a part of that. Um, uh, they had folks in from all over the state. He's truly recognized as one of the one of the top people in that particular area. And we're uh, looking forward to working with you, Ms. Clay. Thank you. Ms. Tidwell. We have several items for the court's consideration this morning. The first is to approve the release of our depository collateral as outlined in your court communication. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, the next item is to receive and follow the auditor's report on the controls over the Justice of the Peace misdemeanor system. Um, we had, in previous audits of various JPs, noticed a concern related to the fact that credit for jail time served or community service um, could be entered and offset any fees uh, and fines that might be owed. So we went back and did a specific review of that. As outlined in the audit, uh, we came up with some suggestions uh, in the meanwhile until a new system can come on board. All of the Justice of the Peace and the IT department uh, were able to, we were all able to come to agreement and we're going to have some what we'll call mitigating controls, uh, basically JP or designee staff reviewing uh, the, re the actual assignment of that jail time credit served and signing off on who reviewed that and who saw it. And then we've asked IT to assist us by preparing an additional report to where we could actually look at uh, the adjustments that were made to those fees and fines and see them by 
uh, the details, see some sort of details. So if the audit, when the Odyssey system comes on board, uh, it's our understanding that that new uh, case management system will address this concern, but in the interim we felt we still needed to bring it to everyone's attention and ask that people um, put a little extra effort forth in reviewing uh, the actual um, issuance of jail time served, jail time credit. Is that a receive and file? Yes, sir. I move to receive and file that report. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And our final item is to receive and file the auditor's report of the county clerk's cash bond account. Uh, we found some er uh, concerns that we had in the area of cash bonds in the county clerk's office. Uh, we were able to work with them. They were very responsive in addressing our findings and have implemented our recommendations. So we appreciate um, their efforts to, to work through this and would ask that you receive and file the report. Be happy to answer any questions. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes Thank unanimously. You. Thank you. Mr. <clears throat> right. Item number one, we're requesting renewal of the contract between Tarrant County and the Workforce uh, Commission of the State of Texas. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. With regard to the second item, we have a check in the amount of $5,426.01 representing our recovery in a subrogation case. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Ms. Coyle. You moved sides. Are you sitting in different places? Move to receive and file personnel agenda. I'm surprised you're still here. We have a motion to second to receive and file a personnel agenda. Uh, any discussion? Please vote. You must be planning on being up here a long time. I see you bring lunch with you. Well, I just didn't make it over there, so <laughs> hopefully not too long. Uh, our second item, we're asking the court to approve uh, plan year 2009 stop loss coverage. This is an item that we bring before the court uh, one time a year. Uh, as the court may recall, stop loss coverage is insurance that we have in place to help us to address claims that we are, that our employees and their dependents incur who are on the EPO and the PPO plan. Uh, those plans are self-insured, which means that Tarrant County handles those claims. Um, and then, of course, again, we have the stop loss coverage to help us as we incur claims. Um, the uh, handout that you have, if you'll look um, at your exhibit um, and at the top of it, it should be the second page of that handout. It's entitled Tarrant County Renewal Rates. And um, there are a couple of different columns, and I want to draw your attention to the, the three or four that we're going to be talking about. Uh, there's a current 2008 column. If you look all the way at the bottom, uh, you'll see what our monthly premium, actually you see annual and monthly premium current. And then there are options one, two, and three. And if you look at the bottom of those columns, you'll see annual as well as monthly premiums. Um, for all three options, it's pretty obvious that we're looking at some pretty significant uh, increases uh, as we look at renewal. Uh, that is a function of what our claims uh, have been uh, for last year and for prior years. And it's also, um, uh, I think, part of what the insurance carrier is anticipating in, in 2009 as it looks uh, at claims. What we're recommending is renewal uh, at option three which is going to be an 84% increase in premiums. Uh, we're looking at monthly premiums of $61,623. It's the lesser of the three evils. And of course, we'll take questions if you have questions. I was briefed on this. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have a lot of choice in it, and so I will move for approval of option number three. Second. Questions or discussion? It is a um, quite sizable increase over the prior year. Again, as uh, Ms. Glenn indicated, um, we've had um, 
you know, the experience of the past has been one that we've really not chosen to move up our <coughs> uh, our specific stop loss but this year with some of the, uh, uh, the issues and some of the claims that we've had. It's it's really one of the things that we're we feel like uh, uh, that we need to do. We all got together kind of around mm -hmm. the table yesterday with auditor's office, personnel, mm -hmm. budget, uh, and other well, administrator's mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Uh, to discuss the uh, uh, the prospect and to really kind of go over with uh, Diana some of the information on that. And as Ms. Glenn indicated, this was the lesser of the three evils. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of where we got to where we where we're at. Any other conversation or discussion or questions? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. I think we ought to just mention that it was a 337% increase. Just sizable is mm -hmm. sizable. Mm -hmm. Very expensive. We are hopeful that uh, as we um, move forward into 2010 that you know, hopefully we won't be looking at increases like this. And um, the executive director has indicated that, of course, she'll begin those discussions very early this year uh, as we look at 2010. So. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Uh, item number three, we're asking the court for approval of terminal benefits for Constable Precinct uh, 2. This is a deputy constable position. Uh, that's the result of Mr. McGinty being sworn in as constable. Um, the constable is requesting a waiver for 336 vacation hours. Fiscal impact is approximately $8,900, uh, excluding fringe benefits. And the constable is, uh, is asking that this waiver be effective 114, which is tomorrow, I believe. Move approval. Second. Right. Have a motion to second. Any questions? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four we're asking the court to approve a waiver of paternal benefits for domestic uh, relations. Domestic relations has a caseworker, <coughs> two. Uh, who's retiring at the end of February with 400 vacation hours. Uh, DRO is requesting a waiver uh, effective uh, March 2nd uh, with a fiscal impact to the general fund of approximately $12,500, excluding fringe benefits. There is one additional um, caseworker two position. I think Commissioner Brooks had asked about that a couple of weeks ago when we had another waiver. So they're in the process of filling those two positions. <laughs> Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item five, we're asking the court to approve um, a third waiver of terminal benefits for juvenile services. Juvenile services has a field probation officer who retired at the end of December with 333 vacation hours. Uh, juveniles requesting a waiver effective 114 for the balance of those hours, 245 vacation hours, fiscal impact of approximately $6,400 to the general fund. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And our last item, we're asking the court to approve the recommendation of the Job Evaluation Committee. Um, this involves our mental health coordinator position. The court uh, may recall that you approved this position, I believe, before Christmas last year. Um, the committee has assigned a pay grade of 73 to this position. Um, the impact to the general fund is estimated to be um, $40,200, excluding fringe benefits. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm voting for whatever other items that I was missed on. We got you. Okay. <coughs> um, it's Brewer Public Health. Thank you. <laughs> we do like to do it in the legislature. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Public Health has one item for your approval. This is to submit a grant application to the Isla Carol Turner Friendship Trust for a hypertension awareness and prevention program. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any, any discussion? Please vote. 
Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beecham, come on down. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have four items for your consideration this morning. Our first item is a bid award recommendation for bid number 2009-019. This is a bid for the purchase of a breathing uh, air compressor system for the Sheriff's Department. Recommendation will be to award the low bidder, Hoyt Breathing Air Products, no matter $28,222. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is another bid award recommendation for bid number 2009-033, bid for the sale of recycled paper. Our recommendation will be toward the high bidder, awarding certain items to corrugated services and Southwest paper at the rates are shown in your court communique. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is another bid award recommendation for RFO number 2009-038. Uh, this is a request for offer for the purchase of an X-ray security screening system, again, for the Sheriff's Department. It's a replacement unit uh, to be placed at the uh, Justice Center uh, off the Weatherford Street uh, entrance. Uh, our recommendation will be to award the L3 Communications Security and Detention, Det Detection Systems Incorporated the amount of $35,574. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And number four is also a bid award recommendation for RFP number 2009-039. Uh, this is named a contract for background screening services for use by facilities management. A recommendation will be to award a per enterprise basis, awarding to a company called preemploy.com. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Don't run off. I'm going to go closer. Uh, we have an audience participation form uh, requesting uh, a time to discuss uh, item 8I23. Uh, Mr. Kenneth, is it uh, Deskew? <coughs> yeah. And with my luck of pronouncing names, it's a miracle. Please uh, go ahead and state your name, restate your name, and your address. Uh, for the record. Yes, sir. Kenneth Disk, 64 Foxcraft Drive, Fort Worth, Texas, 76131. Uh, I'm here to address the court on an item that you just removed from the, it was under 23, under purchasing. And um, I'm going to familiarize you back with, you guys have seen us here before on some other items about service in the copiers. And back in September 30th, 2008, we visited with you all, and you had uh, the purchasing department remove a bid for purchasing of, co of, of service for copiers, and back on, which they did, and back on October 7th, 2008, uh, purchasing resubmitted the bid removing the Minolta DI and EP models from the bid um, and then you approve all the other brands and models and purchasing rebid, it, rebid the EP and the DI models which we received the bid on but they have removed a bunch of, of models from the, the bid that was originally that you guys told them to rebid. So. Um, through some process, we complained about it, and they rebid it again on contract 2009-22, um, which we won that bid also, and we were awarded through the courts. Through the process of actually doing the POs and receiving the business, <coughs> They had already given this business to another vendor that you told them not to go and redo this, to rebid it and get it done under this contract that they have on here, 2005-067. I added some sheets on there, which is actually what is on online, which is in your, uh, your agenda, 
when you pull up your agendas, it's on there. Uh, there's two different ones. There's a rental and a purchase agreement, okay? And that's the way they have it listed, rental and purchase of, of digital copiers, bid 2005-67. Then they list them in sections of B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. And then they list underneath of those the usages. That's an estimated usage of what they're going to use every month, okay? And then they list underneath of that a yearly contract, so that way you can have a contract for the whole year, which that's how they mainly do it, and they figure it on a per-cost basis, per-copy basis. If you go to the purchasing one, which is if they actually trans, say they rent the machine and then they decide to purchase it a year later, or they decide to just purchase the machine outright, then the contract should switch over to the purchasing part of it because they're not running it anymore. And that's why it's, it's in place there, so that they can either purchase the equipment, if they're renting it, and sometimes they'll decide to purchase it. There's also service to provide when they go to purchase the equipment. If you look at the items, the way they list them, we're just going to... one page you're looking at, please. I'm looking at... Did you guys get this? Yeah, we did. I'm just okay, it's the last out. page, which, okay. is, which would be the rentals. The you see where I highlighted it? It says... Use five, and the, the, the M at the end means monthly, okay? 5,000 copies monthly. If you go over to where Minolta is, it's $37 a month. Okay, that comes out to approximately point zero zero. That's fine. But when you go and you purchase the equipment and you move it over to the purchase side, they list uh, under the usage, which would be page two from the back. It says usage 5,000 a month. I'm just using the first one so you understand. I also wrote it out on a sheet that's on page two. The kind of, because this is really small print, and okay. what you see on here is actually on page two. Okay? And you take 5,000 copies per month, and they got $440 there. If you divide that, which I show you on page two, you take $440 divided by 5,000 copies a month, it comes out to eight cents a copy. If you go down, all these will match up. The other ones are eight cents, six cents, five cents. I don't see how they can use those prices. What they're doing is they're using the rental prices for service on the purchase side because somebody made a mistake and put eight cents a copy. And basically, they've taken about $15,000 of our bid and given it to Minolta under this contract, which I don't see how they can do it with that price. Have discussed this with purchase? Yes, I have. And they say, it was sorry, they, they made a mistake, and they can't correct it until next year. They can't have them refund money. Now, in the past, I've made mistakes, and I've had to refund money to the county. Or I actually didn't make mistakes. The, the, Departments made mistakes and overpaid us uh, for, and we've had to go back and actually refund the money to them. So I don't understand why I have to do it, but they made a mistake. Minolta doesn't have to do it. So they and you guys ordered them not to even go this route, but they did it anyway. <coughs> you told them to rebid it and do it fairly and everything, and they just went through this bid and went a different way. Is is this an issue? Of maintenance on the copier or is this the cost of either rental or purchase of the copier? What it is is we received the bid and they used this bid to give them our money. We received the bid on bid number to do the maintenance, right? To do the maintenance on them. On bid number 209022, which was part of that original bid was 2008 which when all this started where we had to rebid and everything. Okay. Mr. Manius, I'd like for us to pull this off the item this week's agenda. Uh, and if you would work with purchasing and or I, I'd like to see purchasing GK, this gentleman yeah. and the DA's office review this complaint because I'm I'm real confused trying to follow what you're telling us here. Yeah, it's kind of complicated. We've had a problem isn't it? once before, mm -hmm. and I want to get this resolved once and for all. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So we'll we'll do we that. pull this off and then do that and then come back in. Uh, I mean, the fact is that they there was fifteen thousand dollars worth of that bid. Whatever. Yeah. Next they week. They just shifted and gave yeah. to Minolta. If we could do that. 
there is a contract in place. Is that not correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, if y'all do that, I would, I would appreciate it because I'm with Commissioner Johnson. I'm confused on this, and I'd rather not try to sort all this thing out up here. So. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So there's no action on item 23 uh, on this particular week. Um, Ms. Lamb, Transportation Services. Good morning. I'm here today to request that Commissioner's Court approve a resolution and order decreeing public necessity in support of a bridge replacement project on Burleson Retta Road at Village Creek. It's in Precinct 1. We're going to use funds from the off-system federal aid highway bridge replacement and rehabilitation program. And I also ask that the court give the judge permission to sign the advanced funding agreement with the text dot um, for this project. Move approval. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Brooks, I believe you have an item in a local agreement. Mr. Reich, we good with these? Yes, sir. I move approval of items 8, L, 1, A, B, C, and D. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Commissioner Fickus? Yes, I have an interlocal agreement with the city of <coughs> Ulis. Uh, do some street re repair work. Um, and I move to approve. Second. Second. A motion and a second to approve items 8L2, A through D. <coughs> oh, let me back up on D. Uh, C and D. C, let me go ahead and do that one too. C and D are uh, with the city of Keller. Uh, for them to purchase asphalt from Precinct 3 and for us to purchase uh, fuel from the city of Keller. So fuel for asphalt kind of deal. Okay. Well, that, well, then I will include, you're including that in your original yes, motion. I want to include that in the I'll agree to the second. Well, that would be A, B, C, and D. Any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Commissioner Johnson. Move approval of item 8. L3 A and B. It's uh, interlocal work with the city of Saginaw and has been approved by the DA's second. office. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Any appointments? I'd like to uh, reappoint uh, Commissioner Johnson and Judge Molly Jones uh, to the uh, bail bond board effective for January 09, I guess through January 10. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, I don't see Ann out here, so I'm assuming that we do not have any We have no bonds. We do not have any bonds at this time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then you have before you the claims, including the addendum. Move for approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Any briefing items, Mr. Mays? Not at this time, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, as we adjourn for uh, our closed session, I would just ask that uh, uh, many of y'all know Lynn Willis. Uh, her husband recently passed away. Um, please just uh, keep her and her family in your prayers. Uh, the Commissioner's Court will now recess the open session and proceed to closed session to discuss items exempted under... Sections 551.071.072.074.076 and 087 of the Texas Government Code.
Having returned from closed session, we will now address the following issues. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of court, if we could go to the administrator section on item A6. We're requesting that the court approve payment of $367,089.26 from the self-insurance fund to restore the loss associated with the tax assessor's motor vehicle account that was not reimbursed by insurance or other sources. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Please show Commissioner Brooks and Commissioner Van Ravens way. Not present. The motion passes unanimously. All right, Your Honor, uh, we have under item D3 in the district attorney's office, we have a compromise settlement agreement and release. Uh, and as it turns out, we have the check here. Sometimes we get the check a little later and have it on acceptance of subrogation recovery funds. But we're going to go ahead and accept the, the check and, and approve the compromise settlement agreement. The check's in the amount of $1,966.76, requesting authorization for a judge sign same. Second. Yeah, motion is second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. There being no further business, we're adjourned. Okay, J.D. We'll see you next week to we'll see how fast. 20 minutes, J.D. Six briefing items? Uh, Six briefing well, items? Well, we'll see you.